you all very much for coming down this morning. I assume that you are all rested from your Labor Day vacation. And uh, I also have a very clear impression that you uh, have quite a crowded agenda now for these next few weeks. So I think we better get started. My primary reason for asking you down this morning is to discuss the drug abuse issue. But before we get into that, I'd like to ask George Schultz if he won't give us an update on the Nicholas Danilov situation in Moscow, which I'm sure is on everyone's mind. Well, Mr. President, the seizure of Danilov and the using of him as a hostage by the Soviet Union is, as you said yesterday, an outrage. They are trying to make him the equivalent of a Soviet spy that we caught absolutely red-handed, I think I'm using your word, uh, and uh, we can't stand for it and there isn't any uh, way in which we should be willing to do what they want, namely trade Danilov for their spy. So that's the situation, that's what they've done, and we make no mince no words about it, and uh, insofar as its impact on the overall relationship between our two countries are concerned, it's the sort of thing that obviously makes a difference, whether they think it should or not. They seem to think it shouldn't. And what it dramatizes, as clearly as anything does, is that issues that have to do with human beings and the way they're treated matter deeply and most importantly in this country, and they don't matter particularly in their country. And this case only dramatizes that fact. Now, as far as the literal situation is concerned, uh, Danilov is in prison. He has been charged with violating Soviet laws and also with espionage. Uh, Zakharov with Z will be uh, charged today, indicted today, and at least as our prosecutors see it, we feel we have an absolute total case. There's no question about Zakharov's activity. So that's the situation. As uh, everyone can imagine, we are working on it very hard. We're making our view known on every occasion when we have the opportunity to do so with Soviet uh, to make this point clear along with such points as the unacceptably low level of immigration being permitted to the Soviet Union right now. In other words, the whole Soviet human rights concerns is, is uh, caught up in it. So that's basically what How did they set up that law? They had a person. Mr. President. Hi. Good morning. Hi, Minister Porter. Hello, Hello. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you. Would you like? Come in. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Parnas. Yeah. So, President, nice to see you. Can you be designated ambassador? Yes. How do you do? Nice to see you. And you know Frank? Hello, <laughs> sir. Well, why don't you take your chair over there and General. Yes. Come in and go in. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
But we appreciate very much that you've been uh, on some East West matters and on terrorism. I'm not too much out there, so I hope that we can be continuing support on military cooperation matters. Mr. President. I'm delighted. You forget to work with me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It's not going to be much. 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 things that are facing us. As a matter of fact, I've looked at them and I think I'll go back to California. <laughs> and welcome back, our traveling. And, and thank you. Good job. Well, we'll start with an overview of foreign policy. George. Mr. President, we are at a moment where by our own people here at home. We have right now in this country a virulent spirit of protectionism that is unlike anything seen since the 1930s. Hi, John. Hi. Nice to see you. Let me introduce this guy. Kenny Coleman, he's the announcer that you can put yeah, that picture of Russ. Coming back. It's better. Yeah. <laughs> he's a gentleman who pitched last night. Yeah. Nice to meet you. This is Mr. Coleman's daughter, Susan. Mike Green will be at John Bailey here, sir. Joe Zambito here, sir. Thank you very much. Well, uh, Mr. Baylor has something he'd like to give you, too, so we want to make sure that the angels don't become one of your favorite things. Mr. O'Neill there in some Thank you very much. Thank you. I know. I've got something for you too. I mean, first we have to know your size. Well, first of all, we got we have a, an autographed baseball for the Red Sox. Well, thank you. And uh, and now, we, what size do you think? Seven pounds. Seven? Okay. Seven. Seven. That was my guess. <laughs> uh, you want to try it on? The hours there too. I know that. I give this to Jimmy for you. Sir. Uh, that's it, right there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you all very much. <laughs> okay, yeah. Do you mind the two Texans taking a picture of there? Ah, better watch that. Great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. But now you haven't done me, of course, because <laughs> I, uh, I know you are going to be playing well. Uh, it could be tough pulling for the Angels or the Red Sox, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, you're not going to answer that question. <laughs> you see, uh, I was just going to suggest that if you were too hard on the Angels, I might arrange to have your taxes audited. <laughs> <laughs> Of all of this, I'm tempted to say that I ought to go to the game in Baltimore. The 
because every time I've gone to the game in Baltimore, they've lost. I also have this for you, sir, in case you ever decide you want to you know, go back wow. into an easier <laughs> job. <laughs> Should I tell them some of the stories and kind of things we do in that <laughs> back and, uh, like having, What I did many years ago, I was a sports announcer and, uh, and broadcast, at that time I was in the Midwest and I broadcast the Chicago Cubs and Sox home games. Teams didn't have an announcer then, you remember, it'd be a half a dozen of you doing the same game. And I remember I was broadcasting a game with the Cubs and the Cardinals tied up 0-0 in the ninth. And uh, it was telegraphic report. I wasn't at the ballpark. And I saw my fellow on the other side of the window there with the headphones on that gets the dot and dash begin to type. So I figured another ball was coming. Dean was on the mound. And so I started in and I said, uh, all right, Dean's comes out of the windup. Now here comes the pitch. And he's shaking his head on the other side of that, and he hands me the slip of paper that he was typing through the under the slot in the window, and it said, "Jurgis was at the plate." Said Jurgis popped out of, or no, Jurgis, no, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. He said, "The wire's gone dead." There <laughs> <laughs> was Jurgis at the plate, and I thought, "Good Lord, in the night, the tide, nothing to nothing." All they got to do is turn that dial. I can't say we'll have a musical interview. <laughs> so I and I had a ball on the way to the plate. <laughs> so I had Jurgis foul it up. <laughs> and I took a chance and I had him foul another one. Just missed being a home run by a foot. <laughs> <laughs> I fouled one back in third and I described the two kids that got in a fight over the ball. <laughs> well, this went on until I was setting a world record for somebody standing at the plate. If there was such a thing. And now I'm beginning to sweat because if I now say something's going on, they'll know uh, I haven't been describing what was really going on. So I, and all of a sudden, Curly sat up and started typing again, and I thought, oh boy, here, fine. So I had another ball come down, had him foul off another one, slipped me the wire, and then I started to giggle. The wire says, Jurgis popped out in a first ball pitch. <laughs> <laughs> People in the street would stop me for days and say, are there any records on that? Is anyone <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Bob Filler has listened to you. He grew up listening to you on the, on the farm in Van Meter, Iowa. Yes, as a matter of fact, I was there broadcasting when he caused that big stir in baseball and, uh, and, and was taken on by Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And uh, the big stir at that time was that the protection for the minor league teams and the Des Moines uh, Demons uh, sort of had first call on him, and Cleveland just came in and took him, and oh, yes. the Demons started raising the stink. Mm -hmm. He threw a pretty heavy ball. Oh, oh, I should say. Almost as tough as Grover Cleveland Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I often wondered, if I may, with that, about that picture, uh, when Doris Day was at the Astor Hotel and saw the sign saying Alexander coming in to pitch. Yeah. How did she get from the Astor to Yankee Stadium with Matt Pendleton driving a cab? Well, you were pitching to Missouri, and I mean, that's a, there must have been a lot of foul balls there, too. It was one very long Well, uh, <laughs> actually, she, she made the, we, the advisor we had on the set for that picture was Amy, his widow. Oh. And she told us, and she tried because of what he told her the night before. When he told her <clears> the <throat> only way he was able to do it was uh, when he could look over back at third base and see her over there. You see, the one thing that the studio wouldn't let us put in the picture, uh, they were afraid to use it at that time, how people thought about it. Grover was an epileptic. Oh, I see. And while all that drinking and everything, uh, even the time in Chicago when they picked him up in the gutter and the judge the next day dressed him down and what an example he was setting to young people and all that. Grover stood there and took it. He rather thought, he thought to have been drunk than to have been, he was in the gutter because he'd had an epileptic seizure. Mm -hmm. And that was why the long walk, everyone, they, they all commented on how long it took him. He won the first game and he won the sixth game. 
got the greatest ovation anyone's ever gotten. And uh, then he wanted to be at the park in uniform for the seventh game. And uh, the night before in the hotel, when he looked at her and said, you must be very tired. And she said, tired? You do all the pitching. He said, no, you are. He said, every time I feel one of those things coming on, I look over. You give me the strength. Well, the long walk also, when later, when she asked him, because in the cab there, she was getting all the work. She never did get there in time. And uh, when she asked him after, why did he, was he so slow in getting out there? You want to know what else was in that picture? That they wouldn't let in the picture? He was facing the only other epileptic in baseball. And he said to her, he said, why should I hurry? Let him wait. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Los Angeles? Yeah. Was, was, uh, yeah. I don't know. And uh, that was it. I, it was great playing him and all the things that she could tell us about it. You know, Many of the major league players were in that picture as extras, too. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. So Bob Lemon, I know, was yeah. in it. Yeah, in fact, Bob Lemon threw the ball for me a few times when uh, uh, no oh, yeah. shots out there on the mound. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pete Metkovich, you remember? Yeah, him? Was oh, yeah. Sure, sure, Red Sox. Can I tell you a story about Pete? <laughs> <laughs> Pete, when the, when the day was over, Pete would be doing all the scenes of the picture and taking everybody's part. They're very brash, and he'd be up there, and he'd be playing actor and so forth. And uh, then, towards the end of the picture, they, you know, you'd now and then pick up little things that you may need for Phil and so forth. So having seen him that way on the set all the time and the way he acted, the director said to him, Pete, you get up the plate. And they set the camera up right out in front of him. He said, we want one now, the umpire behind. He said, we're going to throw a ball, and it's a strike. The umpire calls it a strike. And you just do what you do if you thought it was a phony call, but it wasn't a strike, and so forth. So expecting Pete to really turn around and storm. Now, all of a sudden, Pete's up there with a the bat and facing the camera. <laughs> the ball goes by, and the umpire says, strike one. And Pete says, gee. That was no strike. Thank you so much. Mr. One, one other member of the uh, Nazi team. Joe, just to you, sir. Ellie Rock. Yeah. Mrs. Wright is here, sir. Jack Rogers up there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, listen, thank you for everything and making me a member of the team. Yes, I have a little over here. This is Mr. Samway, who is what they call Red Sox groupie, I believe. Great. Go Thank get you so much. Sorry, you got to get going. Sorry, you got to go. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 I don't know why I can't just stay around and talk more old babies. We've got a couple of meetings this afternoon, sir, and I think that uh, the uh, yeah, National Security Council might have some exceptions to that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Wade. That'll be the one. Nice to meet you. Nice to see all of you. All right. Thank you, Wade, very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sean Sutter, Boyd Sutter, Boyd Sutter, here's the year. Sean, come on. Hi, nice. how are you? Delighted to meet you. Nice to meet you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. You have something for you. We at the Boys Club understand that you vary against your Turn use of cannabis. And, us, and we at the Boys Club are also concerned about the drug policy in America. We five youths have signed our pledge to, to say no to drugs and be drug free, which I would like to present to you and also read to you at this time. The Boys Club movement has accepted your challenge to obtain more than one million pledges from youth across America to be drug free. We, the undersigned, pledge to say no to drugs and to encourage other youth in our Boys Clubs, schools, and communities to do the same by signing a similar pledge. Our clubs will back this campaign with a strong support program of training and community action to help all of us stay drug free. Next year at this time, you will be presented with all one million pledges 
We are proud to take on this challenge and we are deeply honored to join you and Mrs. Reagan in the drive toward a drug-free America. Well, thank you very much. We want to go with Mrs. Reagan like that. That's what we do. Very happy. Something else we're going on here to talk about this very thing in the National Crusade. Uh, you're out ahead of us here. Great. And that's just wonderful. Mr. President, I guess. The runners up would also like to mention Mr. President. Yeah. Will Kearson. She's been the same one. Yes, congratulations to you. Thank you. And Kevin McNeil. Just step this way. Right. Thank you. And you're from the Denver, Colorado. Are you just there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see you again. Wayne Villanova. Villanova. And Rudy Abate. From Morning, I'm going to say. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And, uh, just a few little souvenirs here. We have news for a few grand. Those are the ones that we see with our president. On behalf of the Girls Clubs in America, we'd like to present this to you. We'd like you to be honored by the honorary chairman. Well, I'm very proud and happy to have this. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think they want us all over here now for a picture with this. You want one to do the I'll squeeze in the back of Thank you, gentlemen. When I was doing the General Electric Theater on television, and every year for about 10 weeks out of the year, we had to tour the GE plants and all, and visit, in fact, I met individually 250,000 employees in those several years. But I remember once going to a plant down in Kentucky, and it was pretty high gear stuff, so and we were all women employees, about 800 of them, all dressed in white nylon because of the sensitivity of the things they were working with. And so I stood up, we had lunch together, and I stood up to say a few words at them, and uh, uh, I tried to tell them how nice <laughs> the view was of all those 800 young ladies there, and they emphasized it. I said, when I leave here, I'm on my way to Pittsfield, Massachusetts, where there's 15,000 men. <laughs> and a little corn poon voice in the back said, you stay here and we'll go to Pittsfield. <laughs> well, thank you all for coming in. Congratulations. 
I do want a group photo here. You want a group photo? Okay. Go ahead. Oh, there we go. There we go. How's that? Okay, I think I can see everybody. Thank you very much. See you all. Thank you. 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 Thank you